Hi everyone, happy solstice. Uh, today we're going to look at the sky again and we're going to weave human design with gene keys with astrology. Uh, when I looked at the charts a while ago, I just saw all the things that are going on and it's there are so many things we could speak about right now on the sky. It's a really, really powerful time. So let me bring up the charts and show you. So we have the sun that's moved into gate 15. We're already in the third line. I didn't do any videos in the weekend. So we're already in the third line, which is the line of trial and error, of, of testing things out, of interactions of using your solar plexus in order to in order to go out and experience things and experiment with things in the world. So that's the energy of the day. We're we are already halfway through. So it's been it's been for already half a day. Um, and what I feel is powerful is that we just shifted in only like a few hours ago, we shifted into Cancer. So 15 is this hexagram that is right on the cusp between Gemini and Cancer. So you can see it here, Cancer on this side, Gemini on this side, and 15 is sitting in the middle. So when we are here now in the, in the third line, that's when it shifts from Gemini to Cancer. So the sun goes from an air sign to a water sign. And what we see we can see even the formation here in the middle that are showing the transits. We have a trine. A trine is a 120 degree angle from one sign to another. And right now we have a grand trine because we have, you can see we have the sun and we have, uh, we have Neptune and we have the moon. So that's a trine. And we actually also have Jupiter here, right coming into to water sign. But you can see the moon in Scorpio, <laughs> the sun in Cancer and the Neptune in Pisces, that is a lot of emotions. The water energy is emotions. Cancer is more about the nurturing emotions, that kind of emotions that often got, get, get stirred, up, stirred up in our relationships, in our families. Scorpio is much more existential. So it's kind of going to even the place of despair, going to the underworld and, and finding, finding out, dying to it, absorbing it, and then coming back up. That's what Scorpio does. And then Pisces is poetic, it's spiritual, it's beyond really words and, and even beyond what's human. So that is a powerful constellation that for me, it's important right now when we have this, it's to allow your emotions. Are you allowing them or are you trying to be stable? And here, when we look at the connection with the throat center and the emotional center. We have Neptune here, and here we actually have the last, very last degrees of the 35 uh, the Mercury is in right now before it's going direct again. So here we have the channel of transitoriness, and it's all about emotions and allowing the emotions to be expressed and living through the transitoriness of life, living through the experimental way of life. And allowing emotions to tell us also you know what's good for us what's not good for us uh, not getting lost in emotions and allowing that emotional center to pull us up off center but like i often say using our different awareness centers with which are the feelings and our instincts intuition and also our our awareness using those threes or our even our intellect you know using those three awareness centers together that can have that can be a compass that is safe enough if we're just going on instinct or just using the mind or just you know allowing the emotions and the highs and the lows to dictate it's not going to be a direction that we can probably really trust and we're not always i i believe know who we really are so the g center is all about knowing who you are knowing where you're going knowing what you love but also knowing what love is and right now we see it's open here and i feel like it's asking us to you know it's asking us to come back to come back to center um i can also see together with the transistoriness and the and the emotions there is something with um jupiter that has just now uh started to go retrograde in the gate in gate 55 the gate of victimization 
So we know that retrogrades have to do with revisiting, re-evaluation. And it's in Pisces, like we said, it's spiritual, it's poetic, that Jupiter is about expansion. So what is it that we have to reevaluate re when it comes to our expansion, what it, when it comes to our growth that can either allow us to be free, higher frequencies of, of the 55, or that, are gonna keep, that is gonna keep us in victimization? And how is this connected to also the things that we can just touch and see, like a spiritual sense of, of our life? What's, what's there? You know, what is it that you need to reevaluate in order to be free is, is, is a good question to simplify. And then the other thing that I'm also looking at is when we look at Venus and Mars, and we know that Venus and Mars are kind of these, they're closer planets and they are balancing. Venus is more the feminine aspect, Mars is more the masculine aspect. So we have a, a balancing between Venus and Mars. If we look at the, at the gene keys, we can say that on one side we have IQ and EQ, IQ being our values, being Venus, and then EQ being the emotional uh, intelligence or, or lack of intelligence, and that's, that's Mars. Or we could look at the other side, the, the unconscious side in our charts, and then we would have the SQ and the core wound. So they, they are always together. They're always coupled. They're, already comp they're always complementary is what we could say. And when we look at them where they are now, we have Mars in the 31, which is leadership. It's, it's a Leo energy. And we have Venus in the 62, which is a Cancer energy, which is soon where, where the sun is going. So knowing a little bit more about the, the genetic makeup of the gene keys, this is the code and ring of no return. And it, it's all about words. I have the 31 in my attraction. I have the 62 in my north node on my design side. And words are extremely important <laughs> and not extremely important it's extremely interesting i would say to me language is extremely interesting to me it's always been whether it's english or any other language there's something how i wouldn't say okay i wouldn't say that words are extremely important i would say words is very are very powerful that's that's really what i want to say we know that and you know we can use them as propaganda to manipulate or we can use them as as guidance and, 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 and impact. And when we're looking here at the code ring of no return, it is about using words so that we can open up to a higher frequency. And more than anything, it's like when you have started to speak truth, so le true leadership has to do with truth, right? And the intellect is not a, really about intelligence, it's about finding truth. So, the recording of no return is that once you've started to speak your truth, there's no way back. There's nothing on the outside that can really come and tell you to do anything else. There's nothing that can make you unfree. There's nothing that can push you back into the victim again. But it takes courage to speak that. It, it takes courage. And there is det detriment here on, the, on, the, on Venus in, in Cancer. So I wonder what it, where it is that we you know, think that we can kind of figure it out with a mind but really the truth doesn't come from the mind, the truth comes from, from the heart. Um, there is something to say as well, because when we are here in zero degrees cancer, basically what we are looking at is the solstice. So in the Northern hemisphere, we have the longest, the longest day of the year. In the Southern hemisphere, we have the shortest day of the year, which, uh, which is the, the, the marcation for summer, winter. <clears throat> so when I look here at Aries, Taurus and Gemini, I feel like the seed that has been in the in the earth, in the ground, in Taurus, and that has started to kind of communicate <laughs> with, with, with what's around it, close around it in Gemini. And it's about the self-awareness that the seed or that the human, you know, starts having in those three first signs. And now it's about the awareness with us and the environment. That's the next quarter. And really, you know, it's, it's starting, it's, it's starting, it's cardinal sign cancer. So it's starting to, it's, it's a new phase and it's also a new nurturing. And we have the moon that is ruling cancer. So that's also powerful that the moon right now is in Scorpio. So I would say 
with this 15 that just brought us in to cancer it's the solstice it's the light you know things are coming to light we are bathing in we are bathing in 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 a frequency of light is what what i see this is the longest day of the year things are coming up to the surface and it's also about nurturing you know now that we see now that actually the seed has sprouted and and the leaves are going to come come up how are we going to nurture that how are we going to see what it needs to survive how are we going to give it that unconditional love that nature provides with all the light that it's allowing you know in the summer for growth we know that the photosynthesis is is how is how the plants are, are nurtured so there is absolutely an important question about you know the nurturing of of you of the environment of the life that we can use to that we can use to to grow from to speak truth in the corner ring of no return um and and in that nurturing, it also feels because we have also Jupiter, like we said, in a water sign, there is something there about our freedom. And we could even go as, as here to speak about Saturn that we have in the 19, which is all about codependency. And it's also in retrograde. So what is it that it's still keeping you in codependence or hyper independence when, the, when it comes to more the family realm, the cancer, the relationships, you know? that's also a place to, to reevaluate right now, where, how can I become independent? How can I become interdependent instead of, you know, in the lower frequency, codependent or hyper-independent? So these are themes. Uh, well, we also, we didn't speak about the earth, but what we have on the other side of the sun is always the earth. So here is the, the 10th uh, gate or gene key. So that's what I would say naturalness what's natural for you if you're a plant that is sprouting you know what's what's natural how do you behave you know do you get do you take your leaves kind of towards the shadow like not the shadow but yeah you know the shadow you don't you don't like direct sunlight or are you somebody who really likes direct sunlight like what is the behavior that is that is making you feel good that is making you feel natural they're making you feel as yourself that is a question that is important for sure this week and that you can play with in in the third line and something that i was thinking about before is also about the oh completely open spleen and the completely open ego there is something about you don't have to prove anything you know there, there it feels like it can be a bit volatile we were speaking about mars in leo before i think it was last week you know there there, there is some some energy some tension also the the square between uh saturn and uranus there's tension in the in the air and also where pluto is in in aspect to <clears throat> to uh mars and so i would say there might be some uncomfortable moments in this week emotionally but nothing should have you feel that you need to do anything in order to be approved of you know not allowing the tension the pressure of the outside or somebody else's victimization or turbulence have you prove something by doing something really the ego center the not self is kind of kind of trying to prove your worth or your well meaning <laughs> meaning well by doing something we don't, I have a completely open ego, so I've lived that my whole life. You don't need to do anything to make other people feel emotionally well. You're like, you, know, you don't need that. Or in order to be approved of, or in order to feel worthy. So, so I would say sit a little bit still in the boat <laughs> and, and there are some powerful energies that will pass. And there is something about fears. So here we have this planning center is all about fears, which is asking, you know, what are your fears? There, I think there might be, it's a reevaluating, re I guess, as well. What's your fears? What's the truth of it? I feel now that we have Mercury st stationing and going and going direct again. And Mercury is about truth, right? So I am wondering, what are the fears that you might want to reevaluate? And, and not to say that they're good fears, because I don't know if any fears are really good, but there is there is a reevaluation of like, what do you go into panic about? Where do you feel that you might fail? Where do you see corruption that you might be kind of stuck on? Okay, this is corruption. Like, where can you be open 
about those fears, those the fears of tomorrow, the fears of inadequacy, all these things so that you can so that you can have more wisdom and see things more in truth is what I is what I feel here. Maybe getting new insights in the 43, maybe getting new inspirations, you know, allowing that. So to not get caught up in fears, especially fears that aren't yours, because when it's completely open, you know, we can be, it's it's almost like there's no preferred way of feeling fear. We can feel all the fears. And here there's no preferred way of proving yourself. So you might feel like you need to prove yourself in all kinds of ways. So always looking at the open center, the completely open centers and see mm, there is a there is a possibility for wisdom. There's a possibility here for, for having something reflected uh, to us. So that's that's what I would say for this week, um, for the signature of, of this week. And it's really, really powerful, you know. So have have a good week and, you know, ride the emotions, feel what you feel, allow them. And at the same time, don't allow somebody else's emotions to push you to do something that's not your truth. Thank you. <laughs>